There has been a lot of hype and conversation around the iPhone 7. Is it visionary, or is it just another example of Apple doing their thing? That's difficult to say, and time will tell. Is it worth an upgrade from the 6S or the SE? Well, that depends on your lifestyle, budget, and general vibe. In my experience, we all love an upgrade. We live in the digital age, and with the machine pushing technology on us at an exponential rate, it can be difficult to say no. That being said, it's entirely, of course, up to you. Yes, the iPhone 7 gleams like something from the Lord of the Rings. It's a pleasure to hold. It looks great. It's a powerhouse of Apple magic. Would I like to upgrade from my SE? Sure, why not? Do I need to? Well, this is what I found after six weeks of use. Build-wise, the iPhone 7 meets all usual high-end expectations. It's sleek, elegant, absolutely premium. It's the same essential design as the 6 series. The only real update is the Taptic Home button. This means the home button is touch sensitive rather than your usual click style. I do prefer a classical button, but that's me. The display on the iPhone 7 is the best IPS LCD when it comes to brightness and color calibration. It looks fantastic. It's rich, it's crisp, it's detailed, it's so much better than my iPhone SE. When it comes to pixel density, on paper, it's not as high as other phones in this bracket, but that doesn't really mean too much. It looks absolutely fantastic. My eyes love it. That's all that counts. Another big feature on the iPhone 7 is its water resistance. This is a major plus. It is IP67 certified and you'll get 30 minutes protection in up to one meter of water. Basically, you can sit in the bath and stream worry-free. When it comes to the battery, things get a little bit more average here. This has always been a problem with iPhones and nothing really changes with the iPhone 7. It will give you 61 hours. That is a long time. I do currently get 73 hours out of my iPhone SE. Connection-wise, however, this phone is a massive improvement. It has CAT12 LTE support, meaning you get blazing fast upload-download speeds, HD voice calling, general seamless connectivity across the board. NFC only works for Apple Pay, and unfortunately, there's no wireless charging, unlike with the Samsung Galaxy S7. Which leads on to the biggest bone of contention of all when it comes to the iPhone 7, the lack of audio port. So much has been said about this, and it's one of those things you're either going to like or you're not going to like. Personally, I quite like to have space for an audio jack on the phone itself. However, a lot of people like Bluetooth headsets. It does come with an adapter. Really, it's just another thing to lose. The performance of the iPhone 7 is incontestable, and here it really excels. It's the most powerful phone on the market to date, and it works like a dream. The CPU and GPU performance are literally the best in the world. It is unrivaled. It does come with two gigabytes of RAM, and you can get 32, 64, 128, and 256 gigabyte versions, which is great for all you music lovers out there. There isn't a micro SD card slot, however. iOS 10 does drive 3D Touch much better. It improves the lock screen and allows for third-party integration with Siri and Maps. All the default apps have had nice updates. However, you can't customize themes or icons as with Android. Looking at the audio features, the stereo speakers are good. The loudness is the best yet, and they sound really good. The audio quality through the Lightning to 3.5mm converter is excellent. However, it's not quite as good as other flagships out there. This brings us to the cameras. Now, this has been a major improvement on the iPhone 7. Although it's still 12 megapixels like the 6S, what's been optimized here is the low-light photography. The optical image stabilization has been improved and the aperture has been made brighter. These all combine for far better low light results. The 4K video is solid and it offers a great dynamic range. You can see for yourself in these shots of Worcester Cathedral. It's great. The 1080p is also really good. Is it a vast improvement on the 6S? Well, it's definitely better in low light and this is what it's set out to do. The mono audio recording isn't brilliant. Here's an example. <laughs> It would also be useful to have the video settings in the camera app rather than having to go to the main settings panel in order to change video resolution and settings, but that is the same with all iPhones. The front selfie camera has been updated to 7 megapixels and it takes rock solid images and video across all conditions. It's very good as you can see here. So that's about it. These are the key things you need to know about the iPhone 7. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's a nice phone. The display, camera improvements and performance are lovely. The waterproofing for me is the main clincher. I've dropped far too many phones in the water. The lack of 3.5mm jack does dampen my enthusiasm, but it wouldn't stop me upgrading when my contract is up. I do love gadgets and I have a totally Mac workflow, so this absolutely works for me and it's a definite improvement. 
Would I buy this phone outside of my contract? Probably not. My SE, even without waterproofing, does the job. However, coming from any other handset, this phone is definitely worth it. And if you love all things Mac, well, it's definitely your phone. Thanks for watching.